Hallelujah. 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 God, we praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, again, we thank you. We give you praise that you would bring us together one more time. For you are the God from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. So, God, we come to praise you this morning. We come to give you glory. God, we lift up our hearts and our hands before you. Oh, Lord God, that you would do only what you can do. Bless your people this morning. Set us on fire. Oh, God, do a new thing. In the name of Jesus. God, as we come to worship, we come to rend our hearts before you, to bow our knee before you. Oh, that you may have your way in us. Holy Spirit, have your way today. Bless the musicians. Bless the praise and worship. Bless the youth choir. Bless the speaker of the hour. Set our hearts on fire that we may say, didn't our hearts burn within us? Oh God, have your way. And we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Going to be reading from Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. I love this scripture because this scripture helps to keep me balanced. How many know sometimes we need balance? Amen. Amen. And it reads this. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Praise and worship. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him some glory this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Father. Oh, we got heaven in our view in our songs this morning. Hallelujah. 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 If you live right, heaven belongs to you. 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 Oh, heaven belongs to you. If you walk right, heaven belongs to you.
that King's Highway. Walking up 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 that King's Highway. Every day. Every day. I am walking. Yes, I'm walking. Hand in hand. With the master. Yes, I am. Narrow road. You are there. You are there. I'm in walking. Yes, I'm walking. Every day. On my way. To a higher ground, I say. Yes, I'm walking. Yes, I'm walking. Yes, I'm walking with the master. Yes, I am walking with the king. Walking with the king. Walking with the king. And I'm praying. Yes, I'm praying every day. Our Father, the Lord in heaven, I will be thy name. Yes, I'm walking. With my master, brother, will you come? Sister, will you come? Get on that road, hold on the plow. Don't look back, keep going forward. Yes, I'm walking. Yes, I'm walking. Don't turn back. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. Yes, I'm walking. Yes, I'm walking. I am walking. Walking with the king. Walking with the king. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. Oh, yes, I'm walking. Yes, I'm walking. Walking. Walking.
grateful to be a Christian. So grateful to be a child of God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Father. Oh, bless your name. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, if we could sing this sentiment of our heart. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We have so much to be grateful for. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name.
is flowing from your heart this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise him this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise God this morning. Hallelujah. Well, time for the youth choir. Amen. Let's give them a great God bless you as they come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. 
I said, praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, choir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Test those microphones and praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Say something to the microphones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, altos. Test your microphones. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many know that it seems as though when you switch on the TV, so much is going on around the world, amen? But how many know that it doesn't matter what's going on in the world, that Jesus promised that he'll take care of us? Oh, come on, touch your neighbor and say, Jesus promised that he'll take care of you. Hallelujah.
you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way hallelujah I don't know why but I'm grateful hallelujah I don't understand it but I'm grateful hallelujah Lord you made a way you tore down strongholds hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you made a way. Hallelujah. 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 How many know that we're only here because he made a way? Hallelujah. 
nothing and of ourselves, but only God. He made a way. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Oh, oh my God. Hallelujah. When you recognize the goodness of God and his mercy, hallelujah, and all that he's done for me, my heart cries out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 The part where it says he tears down walls. Hallelujah. Just for me. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for all your wonderful goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Do we have any visitors, first-time visitors with us here this morning? Any first-time visitors? Oh, hallelujah. There's a praise going on. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. We want to thank you. No, you can. We want to thank you for visiting with us this morning. Amen. 
Will you stand so the ushers can give you something? Amen. True light, let's worship them this morning. Let's give them, but God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to thank you on behalf of our pastor and founder, Dr. Wesley Pennock. We want to thank you for visiting with us this morning. Amen. We're so glad that you came, and we hope that you enjoyed the service thus far. Amen. And they've given you an envelope, a blue envelope. Inside is a red pendant. And if you go to my left and to your right at the end of service, there's a CD booth, and they will give you a CD of today's service when you leave. Amen. Amen. Thanks. And we want to praise God for you once again for worshiping with us. And those who are online, we want to thank you for taking out the time to worship of us, with us on live streaming. We thank God for you, and we hope that, God, that you will enjoy the word of God today. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. It is offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all not loud enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you please raise your hand if you need an offering envelope? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't God good this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to give? Amen. Would you stand with me? Hallelujah. And would you repeat with me? I honor the Lord with my tithe and offering. Therefore, I live in abundance because I so much see. Lord, we just thank you for all that you do, God. And, Lord, this is only a token for your blessing. So, God, we just thank you, Lord. And, Lord, we ask that you would bless it a hundredfold. Bless your people. Bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. And, Lord, we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Please follow directions of the earth. Hallelujah. 
Well, we have a couple announcements to make this morning. We regret to inform you of the passing of Mother Patricia Gaylor. Service will be here at True Life Fellowship Church this Thursday, April the 18th. Viewing is from 9 to 11, and service will start at 11. Also, we have another announcement. We regret to inform you of the passing of Ali Choice is the husband of Elizabeth Choice, Mother Elizabeth Choice, and arrangements at this time are pending. Please pray for the families. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, please give your attention to our announcements. Amen. It is the True Light Fellowship Church announcements and reminders. Next Sunday's Hour of Power topic is Faith of a Woman Who Loved Jesus from Luke chapter 7 verses 36 through 50. This passage highlights themes of forgiveness, repentance, love, and hospitality. It also demonstrates Jesus' compassion and willingness to forgive sins, regardless of a person's past, while also challenging societal norms and attitudes towards sinners. Join us next Sunday at 8 a.m. for this lively Hour of Power discussion. Do you have a passion for encouraging and inspiring children? If you do, the Children's Church Ministry is looking for you. If you desire to teach or assist in our Children's Church, we love for you to offer your gift and volunteer at least one Sunday a month. We are in need of both male and female volunteers who are able to connect with our most precious young people by teaching them all about Jesus in creative ways. If that's you, please see Tierra Jeffco or Priscilla Baker for specifics. On Saturday, April 20th, all are welcome to attend our in-depth Sunday School Symposium. Come and discover everything you want and need to know about Sunday School and its overall goals. Attendees will enjoy breakfast and lunch while listening to special guests share their gifts, talents, and experience. We would love to see you here as we strive to fulfill our church's mission of teaching to transform. See Elder Anthony Johnson or Deaconess Marie Grady for more information. The Men of Visicor are having fundraisers to help defray costs of our Black Rock Men's Retreat from July 11th through the 14th. Our next fundraiser dinner is on Friday, April 26th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. All dinners are $15 and includes a choice of fried chicken, jerk chicken or fish, potato salad or coleslaw, string beans and cornbread. The dinners are dine-in or take-out. Please come out, bring a friend or two, and support our True Light men. That's the Men of Issachar's Dinner Fundraiser, Friday, April 26th at 6 p.m. Attention all married couples, join us on Saturday, April the 27th for the We Are One Marriage Enrichment Session with Deacon Michael and Minister Cynthia Anderson at 12 noon. Be prepared to have fun through interactive and interpersonal discussions, all of which are deeply rooted in the Word of God. Invite your married friends and let's grow together. That's the We Are One Marriage Enrichment on Saturday, April 27th at 12 noon. LOV, Ladies of Virtue in Guam, Gentlemen with a Mission for Youth Ages 10 to 17 monthly session takes place this Friday. LOV will be held from 7 to 9 p.m. in Guam from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Please drop off your son or daughter and invite a friend. That's LOV in Guam this Friday. Keep it happy. 
has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform God is faithful to perform he that has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform it our God is faithful God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. I feel like I want to dance here. So what should be considered as we proceed? That's our church announcements for this Sunday. If you missed any announcements, please feel free to follow us on our social media pages or go to truelightfellowship.org and check out current events. Anniversary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know only God? Only God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for 29 years. Amen. Children, will you come up? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, once again, we thank you for these precious children. Thank you for taking care of them, watching over them all of last week. And now, Lord, as they come and stand in your presence, we do ask that you'll protect them, Lord. Watch over them, keep them safe from the evil one comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for these children. We pray that they'll continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
pray that your angels would encamp round about them. And we confess that no weapons formed against these children will ever prosper. We also pray for their parents and their grandparents. We pray, Lord, that you would indeed continue to give them wisdom that they'll raise these children for you. Pray that you'll bless them throughout this day and throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Will you stand with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship the King. Worship the King. We are in His presence to magnify His name. When we seek His face, His glory fills this place as we worship the King. Worship the King. Worship with me. Worship the King. Worship the King. We are in His presence to magnify His name. When we seek His face, His glory fills this place. As we worship the King, 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 as we worship the King. King. Now to come to preach the Word of God, our pastor, founder, Dr. Wesley Pennock, as we worship the King. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. strong tower the righteous run into it and is safe oh Lord our Lord how majestic is your name in all the earth we praise you Father Son and Holy Ghost again Father we have gathered here to worship worship you because it is you who have made us not we ourselves we worship you because you are the giver and the sustainer of life hallelujah we have come to give you praise for your worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. So we praise you. We lift our voices. We praise you in the dance. We praise you with instruments. Praise you, Lord. In everything that we do, we praise your holy name. We've also come to say thank you. Thank you for your love and kindness, your tender mercies, your faithfulness. Hallelujah. 
Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior, our King, who became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. We say thank you. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for keeping us. Hallelujah. Through the storms, through the rain, through sickness, through pain, you have kept us. Hallelujah. We say thank you. We have also come to hear your word. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth shall man live. We pray this morning that your word will minister to our hearts, that your word would heal our bodies, hallelujah, that your word would transform our lives, hallelujah, for your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, we pray that we will not only be hearers, but also doers of your word. Grant us the grace. Give us the grace to be able to apply your word to our daily situations. Now, Lord, we pray for the bereaved families. Pray for Mother Choice to comfort her heart and her loved ones. Lord, we pray right now that even as you are the God of all comfort, that you bring comfort to her. To Mother Gaylor's family, we pray that you'll be with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you would be with them, Lord. Brother Clinton, Brother Floyd, their families, that you continue to minister your grace, your comfort to them. We know you are the God of all comfort. So we place them in your hands this morning. Hallelujah. For those who are sick, we continue to pray. For those who are sick, pray for Pastor Mark. Lord, we pray that you would minister to him. The enemy is fighting, but greater is he that is in us than he that is of the world. Uh, we rebuke him in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the sickness in his body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Raise him up, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are the miracle worker. Hallelujah. You are the great physician. Touch him, Lord. All of those who are sick this morning, remember them. Remember them. Remember Brother Thorpe. Lord, we lift him up to you and Brother Cooper. Brother Jerry and Basil Cooper, we lift them up to you. You are God. You are able. You are able. You are able. You are able. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Touch your people everywhere. Lord, we pray for the conflict in the Middle East. You told us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Today we pray for the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. We know that they're not fighting by themselves. Because Lord, these are your people. And you have not abandoned them. So we pray for Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Pray for our nations and all the nations of the world. We lift up before you. Thank you for your many blessings. Many blessings to us even here at True Light. Lord, that you have allowed us to be on the battlefield for 29 years. Yes, Lord. And we Hallelujah. thank you. Now, Lord, anoint my thoughts. Yes. Speak through my lips to all of us. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen.
God bless you. You may be seated. Thank the Lord for his goodness and for his mercy. I'm not used to preach, to be preaching with this thing here. I don't even know. Thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy. Stay here just in case. Well, praise the Lord, saints. How many of you saw the the um, eclipse of the what was it, the sun or the moon? What 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 did eclipse? I don't know what eclipse, but <laughs> it was fascinating, wasn't it? Uh, even though we didn't get full view, but um, it was really fascinating. To see how the middle of the day, every place got dark. I watched it from the TV. I wasn't going to be looking at it alone. Um, but it was fascinating. And you know, man is nothing before God. The heavens declare. The heavens declare the glory of God. When God speaks, Man shudders. The Bible said the entire nations of the world is just like a drop in the bucket. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. We serve a great God. We serve a, a God who not only is a loving God, but also a consuming fire. Amen. And so, you all know that I celebrated uh, uh, 80 years this past. <laughs> One person, uh, Facebook was just lighted up. I mean, so many well wishes. Uh, some people I don't even know who they are. Uh, but they're just... One, one lady said, she said, Pastor, are you really 80? I said, well, I have to write her, but, you know, text her back and say, yes, I am. And she said, I am amazed. <laughs> it's all God's goodness, isn't it? <laughs> so many people, so many people younger than me, they have gone to be with Jesus. But for whatever reason, God kept me. And, uh, and the truth is, I do not feel like an old person. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. I do not feel like I'm an old person. Uh, 60, uh, when I was six years old, which was just uh, not too long ago, when you all had the celebration with Lana and people there at 38 a market and y'all were putting it up on here and I didn't know <laughs> that was 20 years ago but I don't feel any different I'm actually telling you the truth and so I am agreeing with this lady age is just a number and mine is unlisted <laughs> amen and I was telling my wife that I have so much to do that I don't know when I'm going to leave this, e this earth because I have a lot to do. And I'm in no hurry to do it. <laughs> now, is that Brother Basil Cooper? Yeah. Stand up, Brother Cooper.
Thank the Lord for you. Amen. We pray for him every Sunday and during the week. And thank God that he's able to come out today. All right, we can save the hug until after service. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. We pray for you. And thank God that you're able to come out today. Amen. Thank the Lord. So we continue to pray. Pray for those who are sick. Amen. This Tuesday, which will be the 16th of April, will be 29 years since we planted this church. 29 years. We had our first service at Marvine Street. And uh, how many people still su have survived for the 29 years? <laughs> Amen. And uh, that was a morning that was, was not like any other morning. Because uh, the place was packed to capacity. It was a little place. And... Uh, Ushers came, everybody came, the ushers came, security came, <laughs> because, you know, I was at Deliverance for 26 years, and the pastor appointed me to take over the ministry when he, when he died or was even too sick to continue. So it was known that then I would be the next pastor of the church. But God, God saw it differently. And uh, we came. God has blessed us. So many people's lives has been, have been touched that would not actually, uh, maybe in other ways, but many people would not uh, lives would not have been touched uh, if it was not for true light. Maybe another church or somewhere, but God has been a, has blessed us tremendously. Amen. And uh, we thank the Lord. So if we are here next year, we want to have a great celebration because that will be 30 years. And... Uh, so if we're here, Lord, say differently, we will uh, we'll have a great celebration next year for the bountiful goodness of God. Amen? Praise God. God is good. But hear what I tell folk. If God did not tell you to birth a church, don't do it. Don't be, be presumptuous and believe you think people like you. <laughs> or you think where you are, you know, that somehow you're ready to branch out to start. I never think I would left, have left deliverance. I never thought that. Never thought that. But it did happen. But I believe because God was showing showing it to me in dreams. Let me tell you one dream that I had is that we were going up, I remember Eric Lambert and myself, we were driving up 309. And you know where, um, once you get out of Philadelphia, there are one light and the next light that has Greenwood Street right there. You can make a right, and then they have the apartment building and you left. Just before we get there, I saw Pastor Smith with two two suitcases in his hand. And I said to Eric, we have to stop and help him. So we stopped, put in the suitcase, and he went in. But when the car drove off, I was not in there anymore. And I'm saying, how come I'm not in the car? <laughs> but what God was showing me was that I wasn't going to be at deliverance anymore. 
And I told Pastor Smith, he said, well, you are in the car. I said, <laughs> I said no, I was in the car when I left. And other ways the Lord showed me, because I'm a very loyal person. And uh, other ways the Lord showed me that I, I had to leave. I had to leave. But I didn't just walk away. I met with him and I wrote him a letter. Thank him and uh, tell him the Lord uh, is leading me out there. Some people were glad for me to go. <laughs> but they didn't understand. When I left deliverance, I was told that 2,000 people left deliverance when I left deliverance. And it was, they did not come with me. They just went to other churches. So um, we thank God. We thank God for his goodness. Because now you have, if you are now going through the book of Romans for over two years. So we thank God for that. We thank God for his word, isn't it? Now some people don't too much appreciate the word of God. I'm just telling the truth. Some people like the rah, 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 and all the other stuff, but that cannot help you when you need help. You have, David said, in my heart have I hid thy word, that I might not sin against thee, O God. Now I want to say one more thing before I, um, before I preach, is that a few weeks ago, I think it was a Good Friday, that... Um, you know, in Jamaica, where I was born, I was raised till I was 25 years old. I came here when I was 25. And um, on Good Friday and Easter, you go to all these homes and the stores and the shops, you'll, all, you'll find what we call bun. It, it, looks like, it looks like bread, but it's dark. Uh, it's, it's like a cake. And everybody knows that they have to eat bun with cheese. <laughs> and so, Brother Wilkes brought some bun, and um, he said he just want to give it away. And he brought up quite a few, but he also brought some cheese that, uh, if you want to get the cheese, it was $15. But he was given, was it 13 13 I'm adding $2 to it. But, but he said you, you, the bun was free, but the, the cheese was $13. And my understanding is that people just came out there like, you know, that's not the way true like people are supposed to act. That people came out there and just take away the cheese and do not pay for it. And I'm saying if you did it, you need to... Give him the money today. Amen. We don't act like that at True Light. Because usually, usually, members will take on the, the demeanor of their pastor. And I don't have those type of demeanor. You know, so if you took one, you know, it's not everybody was Israel who came out of Egypt. <laughs> the Bible said some rabble come, came with them. Those are the ones that wanted to go back for the leeks and the garlics and so forth and so on. So if you took, took it, please make sure you pay for it. Because you, you ought not to do that. It was, we were playing and telling you it's free for the, the bond, but the cheese... It, it, it was in like a little can and sealed up. And so I heard some people took two. It's the same thing with the shoes. Some people, somebody went and take out the shoes out there, even though we are giving it to people who are less fortunate. So I don't know. Y'all come up here, so let me pray for you, because we don't, 
We don't be doing that here at True Light at all. We, we don't do that. Amen? Yeah. All right, let me get that out of my system. And uh, go with me to Romans chapter uh, 14. And um, we're going to... We're going to pick up at verse 14, but we're going to begin to do the explanation at verse 18. Verse 14. Are you with me? I know and I'm convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. So do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Now you know what Paul is talking. If you have, uh, if you have been here, if we have visited, uh, you might not understand what we are saying right now, but we'll pick it up later. But is is that uh, you remember when we started out at verse 14, the Bible said, "Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things." So. He went on and talked about uh, the days. Some people worship one day, the other person worship the other day. Uh, Paul said, that's okay. They are worshiping to the Lord. Amen? And then he moved from the, the days and so forth to, to food. And he said, there are some people who, uh, there are some people, Paul said, that they are weak in, in their faith. Now, Paul is writing to a church in Rome. And there in Rome, you have Jewish believers and you have Gentiles. And they're coming from two different kinds of lifestyle. The Jews will not eat anything uh, that is forbidden in the Old Testament. Now, the Gentiles, they don't know anything about Jewish laws. So, they will pretty much do what they're used to doing, right? And so Paul is saying, now, if those who are weak, notice he said, <laughs> but I'm reading from verse 1, receive one who is weak in the faith, but, to, but not to dispute over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, right? But he who is weak eats only vegetables. In the sense that if you go back to First, Cor First Corinthians, there were, there were those who would just eat, even if, it, if, even if the meat in the marketplace was offered to idols, they will eat it. Because Paul said, idols are nothing. But there are some people who are weak in their faith, believe that if it is offered to idols, then they cannot eat it. Paul said, now there are some people who are weak, and they'll just eat vegetables, but there are people who really understand the scriptures that there's only one God. And so, whether it's offered to idol or not, there's nothing wrong with it, because idols are nothing but wood and stone. Amen. And so, in verse 5, he said, one person esteem one day above another. Another esteem every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his mind. Amen. Because, my friends, those things has nothing to do with our salvation. What is the blood of Jesus Christ saves us. Not days are when you, you know, it's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. These things are peripheral, really. Because they will not save your soul. Amen. So, we move down to verse 14. And Paul said, looking at the title in the New King James, said, the law of love. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considered anything to be unclean, to him, it is unclean. If, if your faith 
If you believe it's unclean, Paul said, it is unclean to you. But don't be telling somebody else that it's unclean to them who do not believe that it's unclean. Right? There's some people who love to eat pork. So if you don't love to eat it, that's, that's not your business. <laughs> you know, some people like steaks. And you don't want to eat steak. Like, that's, that's your business. You ought not to. You ought to leave that person alone. Let them eat their steak or whatever they eat. Amen? Because that has nothing to do with their salvation. Amen. I was just thinking when my wife and I got married, um, we didn't even get to dance with each other. Because those days, if you're a Christian, you can't be dancing. Are you following me? We had to just sit in a chair. <laughs> so when we celebrate 75 years, I'm going to be dancing with her. <laughs> because there, were, there are things that people speak into the Bible which is not scriptural. You know, my wife said she was safe from she was a teenager, but she had stopped going to church because she could not wear earrings. They could not do nothing with their hair. Uh, you could not wear pants. Because all of these things, they speak into the Bible that the Bible says nothing about these things. There are some churches still you can't even wear your wedding band uh, to, to church. Because they, they, they speak into things that is not a part of Scripture. Amen. So when, when Dale and Tr Dwayne and Tremaine got married, they'd be dancing. And I'm watching them until we didn't get to dance when we were. Because you couldn't do that at that time. Because it was, it was forbidden. I still think it's forbidden in other places. But there's nothing. Because in the, in the Bible, when you have... Wedding is sometimes a long week celebration. A week long celebration. People are making merry and glad. You know, but uh, you don't know what you don't know. And there are some people, they come up in a church and then they are now the pastor or whatever. And they continue to carry those doctrines that are not scriptural. That's why you have to know the word for yourself. Hmm? Amen. And whatever the Bible does not say, you do not say. And whatever the Bible says, then that's what you say. Amen. And sometimes the Bible is silent on certain things. And if the Bible is silent, guess what? You ought to be silent. Because there's a reason why the Bible is silent on certain things. Amen? I'm not a liberal person in the sense that, but I like to just follow what the Bible says. Amen? And if it doesn't say it, then I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to speak into the word of God. Amen? So Paul said, I know and I'm convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considered anything to be unclean to him, it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. So then, if I know that my brother, he does not want, he believe eating certain food is a sin. If I'm eating with him, I'm going to eat the things that he does not believe that is a sin. Are you following me? Or I don't be eating with him at all. I'm not going to take you to the restaurant if I know I want to have steak and you believe that's a sin to eat steak. I'm not taking you. Right? Or if I take you, I'm not going to eat something that you believe is unclean. Because the Bible said now, I am not walking in love. I'm thinking like this. I mean, being a Christian, it, it, 
you can't just, just being a Christian is not just coming to church. These are things that you have to live out in your daily lives. Amen. It's a different kind of walk. So Paul said, do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. Even though you are, you are not uh, trying for that to happen, if you are doing things that, that will hurt other people, your good is being spoken of as evil because you are, you are not maybe unintentionally hurting others. Are you following me? You're hurting others, and you might not even know that you're hurting them. But Paul is saying, even though you, you're a good person in the sense of that you're walking with the Lord, you can be doing things that is hurting others. And because you're doing that, your good is being spoken of as being evil. You have to learn how to walk. Amen. You have to learn how to live this life. Living this life is about not living for myself, but to help others. Hmm? It is about helping others. It's about, the Bible said, if any man would come after me, not before me, but after me, if any man would come after me, let him what? Does anybody know what the word deny means in the Greek? It means deny. Amen. If, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. And it means that you have to, things that you, you cherish, you have to let it go. Let him deny himself. Then take up, not the Lord's cross, but your cross. <laughs> now, you, when you, whenever you think of cross, what are you thinking? You think of sacrifice. That's what Jesus did. He sacrificed his life for us. So the Bible said we must take up our cross. But not only on Sunday morning. Daily. <laughs> when you think about cross, you're thinking about love. Because Jesus gave his life for us because of his love for us. We must also love others. We must love others sacrificially. Not only when it is convenient for me to do something, but I should do it because I love the brethren. Did you all dance before I came in? Because nobody is saying, they're just looking at me like this. <laughs> Sacrificial love is a love that does not require for the other person to reciprocate. When you love sacrificially, you are doing it out of your own heart. And you're not looking to get something back because you have done something. Because, you know, that's how we love. Hmm? Our love is conditional. You know, if you, you know, husband and wife, children and parents, you come home with a D. I'm not even talking with you. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. We love conditionally. God, God's love is unconditional. And that's how we have to love. Con unconditionally. The love of God has no condition to it. Because the Bible says, before we were born, God loved us. And to understand that God knows me. Knows all my dark side. How many people have dark side? How many people, if you didn't raise your hand, you have a dark side? 
God knows all about me, but yet he loves me. God knows all about you, and he loves you. His love is not based on what you were going to do when you were born. God knows everything that we were going to do when, before we were born, yet he loved us. Do you think when we do things that are wrong, God is surprised? God is not surprised. He loved us. In spite of us, he loves us. That's why uh, John said, what manner of love is this? What kind of love is this that we can be called the children of God? What kind of love is this? For someone to leave heaven where the cherubims and the seraphims are saying, holy, holy, holy. These angels in heaven bowing down to God. And he left all of that robing the flesh of man, came to this earth, died on the cross. Hallelujah. Bled, suffered, and died just because of me. My, my, my. So John said, what kind of love is this that we can be called? We deserve nothing but death. We deserve nothing but the lake of fire. What kind of love is this that you gave yourself for us? Hmm? And then you saved us. Now you cannot save yourself. You saved us, and after you saved us, the scripture said, he who hath begun a good work, God saved you and he take you all the way through eternity. And everything is about God. Hallelujah. Everything is about God. Can you imagine this? <laughs> Lord have mercy. When you think about, there is of a song said, when I think about what the Lord has done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God saved us. Then fill our hearts with peace. You know, you look around you and all that is going on. But yet God gives us peace. Hmm? Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. Hmm? Because he began by saying, in me, you shall have peace. Some people think if they, you know, uh, win the $1.5 billion, they'll have peace. No, you're, if you win, your, your life will be now much more complicated. <laughs> no, you have to now get security. I mean, your life is... And all, the, all these cousins that you, do, you don't even know, they're coming now. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Jesus said, in me you will have peace. In me, in Jesus we have peace. said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. For in this world you will have trials and tribulations and troubled. But be of good courage, for I have overcome the world. And because I have overcome the world, if you abide in me, 
Hallelujah. You will also overcome the world. Hallelujah. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith in Jesus Christ. We are in the world, but we are not of this world. You already know I fell off the rails. And I haven't got to where I'm supposed to be. And I won't be getting there today. In verse 17, he said, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Eating and drinking... Paul said it's secondary. The kingdom of God is, is not eating and drinking. We know we have to eat. We know we have to drink. But that's not of most importance. He said the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness. Upright living before men, before God. And peace. Look at that word again. And peace and joy in what? Lord have mercy. In the book of, uh, I think in the book of Nehemiah, uh, or Ezra, I can't recall which book, but uh, after the law was read to them, and they, this, they found out how much they have strayed away from the law. They, they felt so bad. And Nehemiah said, this is not the day to feel bad. You go, all of you go, go to your several locations and then eat and drink for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You want, you want strength? Then you need joy. Hallelujah. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, saints. If you don't praise God, you have no joy. Hallelujah. And the devil can get you in such a bondage that if you see other, others praising God, you get mad. We call these people firefighters. <laughs> Hallelujah. They will come to, uh, to throw out. <laughs> You're so happy in Jesus and they don't like it. But you have to praise God, my friend. That is, what, that is something that we all have to do. Because when you praise God, it gives you freedom in your spirit. But then there are some people who, just because you're dancing, and, and you don't have to be in the spirit to dance. You just dance because you love Jesus. Amen. You don't have to be in the this, in this spirit. You dance because you love God. Now, joy is different from happiness. We, we are happy because of what happens. So, you get a good report from the doctor. You're happy for that. You get a raise on your job. Even 2%, you're happy. <laughs> And then, you know, got a new car. Even though for the next five, six years. <laughs> but you got a new car and you're happy. You know, if you don't have a garage, if it's on the street, every time you wake up, you're looking through the window <laughs> to see if it's... <laughs> but you're happy. And you'll be happy like for 
a month, washing it every day. But after a while, it is just a car now. The happiness is gone. But when you have the joy of the Lord, hallelujah. For the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Joy. Peace. The joy of the Lord is not about what happened, but is because of who I am in God. Amen. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord. So, the Bible says then, it is not eating and drinking, but it's actually righteousness. Look at verse 18, 17. No, 18. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. The word there, he who serves, is a word douleo. It's coming from the word doulos, which means a slave or servant. And what it is saying is that in a good sense, you are a doulos, a slave, because you yield obedient in obedience to God. In other words, God doesn't have to come and hit you over your head to serve him. You serve because of your love and obedience to him. In a bad sense, the word duleo means the one who then becomes slave based on raw power of those who have the power. In other words, when people are taken into slavery. And you have a lot of that in the United States. Uh, we thought slavery was abolished, but you have people... You have what they call sex slave. You have people who are uh, young kids are just uh, taken away and they, from relatives. Nobody knows where they are. They're given into slavery. Slavery in all different kinds of ways. Amen. But when you yield obediently to God. So what the Bible is saying? The people who serve Christ in what way? In the way of understanding that f uh, food is just secondary. In the way of understanding that what pleasing to God is righteousness and peace and joy. If we serve God in this, these, this kind of way, where we understand that we ought not to be lording it over other people, tell them what to eat from, what not to eat, for the, Jesus Christ is Lord of all of us. If we serve him in this way, notice, go with me again, verse 18. For he who serves Christ in these things is what? Is acceptable to God. Hallelujah. Is acceptable to God. And then the Bible said, is pleasing or approved by men. Word dake, dake mazo. It's a word that, you now before our modern era, they did not have paper money. It was metal. Because that's what the word dake mazo means, is, uh, is that it is approved after it is tested. So, in other words, uh, what they would do is melt, put the metal in a crucible, melt it, and then when it comes out, the metal now is soft. Then they have to shave around it. That's why now, because that was legal tender, so it has to be tested by those who understood uh, what, what it means to test those things that is adequate for legal tender. And that's what the word means, that that. It is approved after testing. What the Bible is saying, that even men will be approved of what we do when we do the things that please into God. Amen. 
Sometimes they might ridicule you. But in their hearts, they know that you are living different from them. And even though they might ridicule you, as soon as something happens in the job, who are they coming to? Could you pray for my mother? Could you pray for my brother? Yeah, why are they asking you that? <laughs> it's because they know that you're different from them, that you are serving Christ. And even though they might be ridiculing you, deep down in their hearts, some, some unbelievers hate to see a believer backslid. I don't know if you know, they, they don't want to see you backslid because they, they believe that you are their cushion. You are actually providing <laughs> cushion for them. They don't want, even your job, they want you to be saved because they need somebody. To <laughs> Amen. You're like a shield for them. So the Bible said, he who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God. And not only to God, but is approved by man, by men. Therefore, verse 19, look at verse 19. He said, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace. Lord, have mercy. Therefore, let us pursue the things which makes for peace. God wants us to pursue. It, it actually figuratively is, it is of one who in a race runs swiftly to reach the goal. We pursue righteousness. Hallelujah. God wants us to, the Bible tells us that, or Paul tells us, which is the Bible. Paul said, brethren, uh, I have not yet fully got a hold of everything. I am not sprouting wings yet. But what Paul said, that I am forgetting those things that are behind. And I'm pursuing. I'm reaching. Hallelujah. With every muscle, I'm reaching to those things that are before me. Because as you know, I mean, how many of us were born saved? None of us are born saved. And we have to leave those things that we used to do behind us. And you cannot, you cannot drag all these baggage. I remember J. Adams writing one of his counseling books. He said, the thing with a husband and wife, when both of you now get married, both of you come with two big suitcases. <laughs> and those suitcases, <laughs> you come with a whole baggage of suitcase. I come with my baggage of suitcase. And then they're right in the middle. So now, for a hundred years, we have to begin to unpack what's in those suitcases. Because we're coming from two different lives. Yes? Coming from sometimes two different cultures. And then we have to now become one. That's it. <laughs> and that's not the way my mother does it. And that's not the way my mother does it. And now we have to unpack. I don't care how your mother does it or how your mother does it. Now we have to do it the way God wants us to do it. And that's what brings it, the, the problem is that, you know, because you're a product of your environment. That's why... Lord, here, here I go now. That is why you can't just rush into marriage. 
And because it will take you a lifetime to get some, not even joy, some happiness. <laughs> Just because two people are saved, it doesn't mean that you're compatible. Are you listening to me? Well, some of you are finding that out. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Just because two people are saved, it doesn't mean that you are also compatible. Because there, there, there are sometimes the husband sees salvation different from you, and you see salvation different from him, because they have their own mind about what is being saved mean. Hmm? <laughs> I'm finished. I'm not going to. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. People come to me. In my mind, I see this young lady. Met this gentleman for three months. I said, you can't get married here for three, after three months. So when my parents got married after three months, I can just see. There are some people who come to me I can already see. You see, God not only, if I'm your pastor, God gave me some wisdom too. And it's also to counsel you uh, the right way. And uh, sometimes I'll see things that I know is not going to work. But I'm not going to, I mean, if you don't listen to me, uh, I usually tell people, and this, this, is, this is the heaven's truth. I'm closing my Bible now, but... Um, I'll tell people, if you're going to get married to someone, make sure you come to talk to me. Both of you. Because, see, people come, they're already secure. They're already secure the, um, the venue for the reception. Put money down. They already, some of them have bought their dress. <laughs> have the ring. So what they're trying to do is for me to rubber stamp it. But we have had this church for 29 years. The only person who have ever come to me before doing anything was Carmela. You all remember Carmela. Some of you remember Carmela. And she brought Andre and she said, we're not doing nothing, Pastor till you talk to us. And I never, never forget her at all. She came before the fact. Some people don't even want to come to me because they don't know, they're afraid that I'm going to say no. <laughs> but that's fine. Because if you go ahead and do it, and you did not come to me, if you get in trouble, guess what? <laughs> Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things which one may edify another. The things that actually build up. Because building takes time. Right? Building is a process. And it takes time. We have to be patient with one another. Because uh, this walk takes time. Yes? And we have to learn to forgive one another. 
because this walk takes time. So then even if you did not come to me, I have to forgive you and still count for you <laughs> because we have to forgive one another. Yes? We have to give one, forgive one another because hear what the Word of God says. We are building up, edifying others, strengthening them. Hallelujah. And those who are weak, we're going to find that out, but we'll do that next week. Those who are weak, we can't just look at them with scorn. Those who are weak, we have to work with them to strengthen them. The Bible said, if your brother is, is caught in a sin, you know, King James said fall, but it's a sin, then you are you who are spiritual. Notice, he's not saying though anyone can go, but the one who is spiritual. Because if you're spiritual, then you know how to handle the situation. Know that just because the brother is caught in a sin, that is still God's child. Because you know how some of us are. Once you know you are not into that situation and someone is caught in that, you'll be beating them over the head. But God said, now if that person is caught in a fall, you who are spiritual, go and restore that brother. Because maybe next week you might be in that situation. Next time it might be you. Amen. Uh, you remember there was when, um, what's the guy used to have 700, not 700 Club? Jim Baker. When, G, when Jim Baker was in all that foolishness. And then uh, Jimmy Swaggart came out before camera that there's a cancer in the church that needs to be excised. And he was actually doing the same thing or worse than what uh, uh, Jim Baker was doing. <laughs> then when, when he got exposed, then he's coming crying before the TV. Uh, so you better not be bashing anyone over the head because you never know what can happen to you. All right, I'm finished. Oh, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. We have to love one another. Amen? And we have to let other people do what they want to do if it is not a sin. That's what the Bible is saying. You're going home, whatever you have for dinner, that's your business. Don't let nobody put you in some straight jacket about you're not supposed to eat. Or that's not, food is secondary. Amen. That's what I learned today. Food is secondary. Secondary. The kingdom of God is what? The kingdom of God is not meat or drink but his righteousness, peace, and joy. Take that home with you. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, I just thank you for your precious word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. No, Lord, we have heard the word. Help us to apply what we have heard. But maybe someone who is here uh, don't know Jesus. And we cannot apply anything to your word until your spirit comes in our lives. So if anyone is here today, I pray that you touch that person. And give them the courage to say yes to Jesus. So as your head are bowed. If you don't know Jesus, would you just slip your hand and say, please pray for me, Pastor. I need to know Jesus. Hallelujah. And if everybody knows Jesus, then please everyone stand. Hallelujah.
Glory to Jesus. And then, before we dismiss, would you come forward now? If you need for me to pray with you, uh, whatever your situation, if you need prayer, would you come? Hallelujah. Pray for Mother Choice. God will help her through this. Hallelujah. 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 My mind. My heart. My mind. My soul. My soul belongs to you. Pay the price. You pay the price for me. Way back on Calvary. Way back on Calvary. Why I pray. Let's lift our hands and sing it one more time. I love you, Lord. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, today. Oh, because you care. Because you care for me.
of God's goodness. Hallelujah. God bless you, saints. Also, we prayed for Sherry's father, Brother Marvin. You know, he had heart surgery and uh, he's mending, but it takes a, it's a long road coming back. Amen. So remember Marvin Johnson, we praying for him and for everybody that you know. If you're beside someone and you don't see them, in fact, I think we have a car there, Helen and made of one, that you're, you are your neighbors, whatever, I can't remember what it is. What is it called, Helen? You remember you made up a, a car that they can fill out? What is the name of it? Okay. So if, if you have... If you're sitting beside someone and you don't see them for like a week, that's okay. Two weeks. But three weeks, you need to, uh, if you're sitting beside them, try to find out what is wrong. Because sometimes the devil, one of his main tools is discouragement. Because the first one he takes out is toolbox. And uh, sometimes people feel discouraged and just a call or whatever, uh, reach out to the person. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you enjoy the message this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise God this morning. Hallelujah. Pastor? 
if you just wait a minute, there's a presentation they want you to see this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and happy birthday, Dr. Pinnock. I thank God that he has given you 80 years of life here on the earth, which means that by reason of strength, you've been around. You've been a good friend, a counselor, a mentor, someone who has stood by me down through the years, not only me, but my family as well. And we all thank God for you. So I just want to say again, happy birthday, and I pray that God continue to bless you and continue to use you as you live for him. Thanks so much for being there. Thanks so much for being an example of the love of God, and I'll see you real soon. Evangelistic Church family, we extend to you a blessed happy birthday greetings all from all the saints of God to you. Press on, my dear friend. Our prayer for you is continued strength, health, and prosperity in this life. May the Lord be with you. And I'll be talking with you. God bless you. We surely love you. I love you, Lord. Lord. Doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Marvelous indeed that you get to see 80 years and even more marvelous that we are here to celebrate and rejoice with you. We love you. We are grateful for you. Happy 80th birthday. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my uh, Happy birthday, man. Um, I, uh, I wouldn't be uh, anywhere close to the man I am today without the guidance uh, that you're getting from your sermons and your advice, and it's it's all been incredibly, incredibly valued over the years. Have been faithful. Happy 80th birthday, Pastor Timothy. Thank you for your love and guidance. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for caring for my own family. We, we love, love you from the Miller family. Hi, this is Everybody I just wanted to wish my pastor a happy, happy 80th birthday. Thanking God for you, thanking God for placing me under your care. Um, and your gift is a phenomenal gift of teaching. And whenever you're talking, just know that I am listening along with the flags. Love you. My check, my check, my check, my check. Pastor, is your mic on? Have, Have a blessed day. Day. I you birthday. Pick him up in Christ Jesus. and I would like to wish pastor a very happy birthday. The Lord has allowed you to become 80 years young. Our hope is that you would live to see many, many more. May God continue to bless you, pastor. We love you. Happy birthday. You have been so, so Happy 
a blessed birthday, Pastor Pinock. We love you. Happy 80th birthday, Pastor. We, your sisters and brothers in law, thank God for you and for the Christ-like model you have displayed over the years. We pray you have many more birthdays as the Lord promises to satisfy you with long life. Psalm 91, 16. God bless you. We love you and are always praying for you. When we get ready to fight, we get on our knees. Hallelujah. And we begin to fight in the spirit. Hallelujah. We fight. We fight till you begin to sing on your knees. Hallelujah. I passed the pen out. Happy birthday to you from Jackie Valentine and from the Valentine family. God's blessings on your 80th birthday from the staff of the True Light Fellowship Church. Head of household, leader of home, provider for my family materially and spiritually. I model myself after the scripture Proverbs 22, 6, raise up a child in the way he should go. There's been the most rewarded and instill in them the ways of the Lord. I have a wonderful life as a husband, father, and grandfather. There is more of an upside than down. I have learned that the Lord has called me to be one of his under shepherds. He is the great shepherd. Therefore, whatever the problems are, I turn them all over to him. Happy birthday, Pastor. Hallelujah. Just before we close out this morning, we want you to know that we have cake in the back, some refreshments to celebrate Pastor's 80th birthday. So please, let's all go back and let's have some fellowship. Amen. As we celebrate the 80th birthday of Pastor Pinnock. Amen. Amen. Also, one more thing. I'm told that there is some lettuce and some cauliflower back there for those who would want to take some home. Amen? Amen. Let's bow. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. God, as we celebrate this 80th birthday, just as we worship you, God, we ask that you bring us back at the appointed time. We give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said, Amen. Amen. The doors of the church is open. Hallelujah.